Good afternoon. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It is Thursday, October 31st, 2024. Happy Halloween if you celebrate. Uh, we are watching the tropics and this update is being done for the All Hazards Consortium Sensitive Information Sharing Environment uh, where private sector liaisons within state emergency operations centers uh, coordinate and share information with the private sector owner operators uh, so they can get across state lines easily, uh, bring water into disaster areas, restore power quicker uh, after disasters hit. Well, we're watching the tropics right now, and uh, we do have the chance, uh, it's getting closer, uh, of a tropical system to develop. Uh, I have right now in here the uh, GOES satellite uh, sector, and you can see what's uh, going on here. This is uh, the sea surface temperature data that I have turned on. I can move it up here a little bit. Well, let's just take it full screen so you can see what's going on. Uh, this is the Caribbean Sea. Uh, here is Mexico, Cancun right up here. This is the island nation of Cuba, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico. Uh, by the way, Puerto Rico is getting a lot of rain right now. Uh, flash flood watches, some local flash flood warnings. Look at this stream of moisture that's just pumping right up over Puerto Rico. Uh, it looks like over the next several days into the weekend, let's see, today's Thursday, so Friday, Saturday into Sunday, uh, some places in the central part of Puerto Rico and northern Puerto Rico uh, could see 8 to 10 inches of rain. That's not going to bode well for higher elevations as that water runs down into the valleys and causes flash flooding. Uh, and also potential mudslides. Pay close attention if you're watching from Puerto Rico uh, to the National Weather Service watches, warnings, uh, and advisories that they issue there. Also, a strong uh, northerly and northeasterly wind uh, causing a rip uh, current advisories and high surf advisories there too. So we have an area, a broad area of low pressure that's causing this. Uh, you can see it uh, sort of uh, streaming its moisture up and over Puerto Rico. And I'll show you the model forecast data uh, in just a moment. Uh, but I just want to mention as well, uh, in Florida, we have just had this persistent, I mean, we, we've been very dry along the east coast of the United States because of a strong high pressure system. Uh, and that has just been consistently creating east to northeasterly winds headed into Florida. There are coastal flood advisories, rip current advisories, high surf advisories, we are going on now uh, for several, many weeks after Hurricane Milton passed across Florida. Uh, we have had this high pressure system that's been dominant over the eastern U.S., bringing these easterly winds into Georgia, into parts of South Carolina, and mainly Florida, where there's been quite a bit of uh, coastal erosion there as well. Uh, but if I zoom down here a little bit closer into Puerto Rico, uh, you can see right here these clouds, uh, uh, storms, uh, dumping quite a bit of rain. And over in GeoCollaborate here, I'll take you there uh, full screen. This is the area where the National Hurricane Center is monitoring for potential uh, tropical development. That is this area right here. There is a 50% chance of development in the tropics here uh, in this uh, hashed area over the next seven days. So that's into early next week. Models are indicating though that we might see some low pressure uh, developing here over the weekend. And I'll show you that as well. But 0% probability for a tropical system to develop over the next two days. Uh, so nothing expected, but that doesn't mean we don't have situations setting up with moisture streaming out over Puerto Rico. And I can zoom in, let's zoom into Puerto Rico here uh, just to show you what's going on. And we do have lots of advisories here on the North Shore, our high surf advisories, flood watches in central and eastern Puerto Rico. I'll turn those advisories off uh, just so uh, we can focus in a little bit on the radar data over Puerto Rico. So here's the island of Puerto Rico and a lot of heavy rain just kind of streaming over the island and a lot over the northern part of the island too. There's just a broad area of low pressure uh, that is uh, north of the island. And that's what we're going to watch uh, with the models. And that's what I want to show you as well. I'm going to show you the uh, GFS model. And I'm going to start this from the beginning. Let's take that full screen here. I want, to, I want you to watch two things as I cycle through this uh, model um, time sequence. This high pressure that has been persistent over the eastern part of the country 
And also, this is the area that we're watching for potential development. And you can see a little bit of low pressure off the northern coast of South America here. Uh, but just watch as I advance this. So this is uh, this morning, early this morning. We're going to just take it through time, time steps. And this is by this evening, so nothing really of a tropical nature forming in the Caribbean. And I'm just going to keep this going until we do see some area of low pressure uh, that's forming. And that's uh, here now Saturday morning. We have a broad area of low pressure. But notice that area of low pressure also deepens slightly over Puerto Rico and north of Puerto Rico. That is why this heavy, heavy rain um, chance continues into the weekend so again in puerto rico it is not going to be uh your normal sunny beautiful type of weather uh it's going to be very rainy intense rainfall possibly some mudslides and some flash flooding as well but let's advance this we'll keep going this is the uh, model viewer from the hurricane research division and now by sunday this is uh, zero z sunday so saturday night we're talking about a low pressure system here in the Caribbean and one forming northeast of Hispaniola right here. This is that broad area of low pressure that's giving Puerto Rico the heavy rain right now. Looks like it could take on more organization uh, by Saturday night. And as we continue on with this forecast, you can see what happens. This deepens slightly as you're uh, approaching the southeast, extreme southeastern Bahamas uh, with this low pressure system here. And then another one uh, in the Caribbean that wants to develop as well. So what do the models typically do with lows that are close together like this? Well, they're deepening in deepening this one in the Caribbean here. So this may be a tropical storm uh, by Sunday night. And that's why we'll be watching this closely by Sunday night. And then that uh, has it uh, impacting Hispaniola, Haiti uh, here. But then there's another system in the southeastern Bahamas. These are very close together. And when you have low pressure systems that are close together like this, the models just want to uh, combine them and see how they sort of spin around each other. This is like a Fujiwara effect uh, in the models. Uh, and this is now on into Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday afternoon, we have a broad low pressure area here with some, uh, some inkling of uh, a low pressure uh, there in the Southeast Bahamas, Central Bahamas. Uh, and then it kind of diminishes, but spins it out over South Florida. This doesn't look like it's a tropical system like a tropical storm or a hurricane, but it could lead to quite a bit of rain in South Florida uh, by mid next week. So that is something that we'll be watching as well. Uh, and then it sort of spins across Southwest Florida, not as a tropical storm or a hurricane, but perhaps a depression or just a tropical low that's bringing a lot of moisture into South Florida. And then it develops it itself again in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Don't worry right now. This is very far out in the future. This is out here. Look at that. 183 hours. I call that fantasy land. You all know I call that fantasy land. This is going to change. But it is not an intense hurricane here. Uh, but it does sort of diminish it in the Gulf of Mexico, turns it out to, to be nothing. Remember that high pressure area that I told you was dominating in the East Coast? This is really going to be like a block and forcing uh, systems uh, to uh, stay in the Gulf of Mexico where the models have this one just petering out. Uh, into not much at all, just a very broad low pressure. So that's the way it looks from a model standpoint. This is way out there in the future. It's just giving us some form of guidance uh, in what we can expect, uh, perhaps, uh, but we'll be monitoring it day after day after day. We're going to watch you through all this. Uh, make sure you're informed on what's happening in the tropics. Uh, we still have a ways to go. Uh, tropical season doesn't officially end until the end of November. Uh, and uh, systems could develop beyond that as well. This is just sort of a June 1st to November 30th uh, is typically hurricane season. And I wanted to show you one other thing as well, and that is if you've heard of the, the rain uh, that has been flooding in Spain. Uh, this is the Europeans geostationary satellite. Uh, this is called Meteosat. And it's just like we have. We have goes, uh, goes east, goes west. And we currently have a goes central, uh, which is the uh, recently launched 
Goes U satellite, which now became Goes 19. Uh, that's uh, doing testing. Uh, NOAA is testing it out over the central part of the country in geostationary orbit. Um, and so uh, now, though, this is that low pressure system that has caused so much flooding in Valencia. Uh, those floods have killed now at least 158 people. Tragic flooding from intense rain happening Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. All because this low pressure system, I know it looks like a hurricane, but it's not a hurricane. This is more of a, what we call a synoptic scale system. Very broad circulation. We also call it a cutoff low. It is separated from the jet stream, so there's no real wind to push it along. It's just drifting. And these uh, streets of rain lined up over Valencia and uh, caused terrible flooding there. And you can see also some additional uh, heavy thunderstorms going on up near the France border. Uh, but it is uh, continuing to sit and spin there. We don't expect floods as dangerous as the ones that hit Valencia, but local flooding could still be occurring across portions of France. Just wanted to show this to you because it is really, I'll zoom out a little bit, and you can see uh, how much of uh, Western Europe uh, this system takes up over the ocean. Here's another ocean storm here. And uh, even out over, when I switch back to the GOES uh, satellite and zoom out here, You'll see uh, this reload, but uh, here is that storm from the GOES satellite that's over the uh, U.S., over 75 degrees west and over the equator. We can still see that system. This is the system that's caused the flooding in Spain uh, over the last couple of days. Here's an ocean storm here with a cold front, and this is the rain that's coming down over Puerto Rico uh, and the Caribbean islands there. Not a fun day to be uh, over the Caribbean islands, although uh, Barbados uh, looks fine and the southern part of the uh, Windward Islands uh, look good too. Uh, but this is the way it looks. We're watching this area in the Caribbean for a potential development, and we'll be watching it very, very closely for you. So um, I also I'm going to put on here at the tail end of the video just a little uh, interesting thing. I've gotten comments about uh, how interesting satellite imagery can be. Uh, well, I'm going to uh, uh, put on maybe once a week uh, some interesting satellite imagery uh, that you can take a look at and uh, just be fascinated by what satellites can see around the world. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And please take care of yourself and watch out for your neighbors. They really do appreciate it. Today in Earth is Art, a volcanic landscape in the Tibesti Mountains of Chad shows some mysterious shapes. However, science can explain mysteries in satellite images. The octopus-shaped feature consists of ancient volcanic flows. In the crater below it, what looks like a face are bright salt deposits.